you will attain the ajr for sunnat etikaf. So it's very simple. In Arabic, we can say nawaitu sunnat al etikaf. Or in English, you can say I intend to be in etikaf, sunnat etikaf. Or in Urdu, you can say many sunnat etikaf in yet. Sallu ala al hadib, sallallahu ala Muhammad. Today's topic is a little bit longer. Uh, it cannot be completed in one khutbah. Maybe uh, half of the topic we shall listen in this khutbah and rest of the topic we will have in inshallah in next khutbah. The topic is about bridge of Sirat. As a common Muslims, we hear about bridge of Sirat. It is it is sharper than edge of a sword, or is it lighter than it is? Is a lighter than the thread of your hair. This this is the only two information we have. So let's peep into Quran and. The Ahadith, Holy Ahadith, about this bridge of Sirat. Once the slave girl of Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz, she came to him and said, I had a dream about the hellfire was blazed up and the bridge of Shirat was placed over it. The Umavi caliphs were brought first. First of all, Abdul Malik bin Marwan was ordered to cross the bridge of Shirat. He climbed onto the bridge, but alas, he fell into the fire. Then his son, Walid bin Abdul Malik, was brought, but he too fell into the hellfire. Thirdly, Suleiman bin Abdul Malik was brought, and like the previous caliphs, he also fell into the hellfire. Finally, O caliphs of Muslims, you were brought. As soon as Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz heard this, he screamed fearfully and collapsed. The slave girl went on to him, O leader of Muslims, O caliph of Muslims, please listen to me. By Allah, Wallah, I saw that you successfully crossed the bridge of Shirat, but Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz had fallen unconscious due to the fear of Allah, due to the fear of bridge of Shirat, and was withering around in panic. May Allah Azza wa Jal shower his blessings upon him and forgive us for his sake. My dear brothers, even though by Sharia a dream of a non-prophet is not a proof, but still Sayyidina Umar bin Abdul Aziz became unconscious as he was highly sensitive and fearful regarding the matter of crossing the bridge of Sirat. Indeed, the matter of bridge of Sirat is very crucial and severe. It is finer than even a strand of hair, sharper than even the edge of a sword, and it is placed above the hellfire. By Allah Azza wa Jal, crossing bridge of Sirat will be very crucial and alarming matter which everyone you, me, all will have to confront. Sayyidina Hassan Basri Rahmatullah saw a person laughing. He Rahmatullah asked, Oh young man, have you crossed the bridge of Sirat? He replied in negative. He was then asked, Do you know whether you will go to heaven or hell? 
He replied, no, I don't know. Then Hassan Basri said, then why are you laughing? In other words, you are laughing despite the fact that you have to confront extreme difficulties and you are unaware of your final destination either. From that time onward, the young man became serious and he never been seen laughing again. May Allah Azza wa Jal have his mercy upon them and forgive us for their sake. Sayyidah Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, It's astonishing as to why a person laughs whereas the hellfire is behind him and it's so strange as to why a person gets happy whereas death is behind him. And it is narrated by Sayyidatana Hafsa radiallahu ta'ala anha that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, I hope those who were present in the battle of Badr and Hudaybiyah will not enter into the fire. She asked humbly, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah has mentioned in Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Wa imminkum illa wariduha. كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَطُمًا مَقْضِيًّا Surah Maryam verse number 71 And there is no one among us you who shall not cross over hell. This is inevitably a decided matter upon the responsibility of your Lord. It is narrated in Surah Maryam, verse number 71. Our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam replied, Have you not heard that Allah azza wa jal said, We shall then rescue the fearful ones and leave the unjust in it fallen on their knees. Sallu My brothers, the foregoing narration clearly states that everyone, everyone will have to pass over the hellfire. The believers who possess the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal will be saved and protected whereas the culprits and unrighteous people will fall into the hell. Will it be a very difficult situation? But still we don't wake from the sleep of negligence. Is it an alarming matter? Sayyidina Jalaluddin Sayyuti Shafi radiallahu ta'ala anhu says once Sayyidina Abdullah bin Rawaha radiallahu ta'ala anhu began to weep in his home. His wife became worried and asked what has brought tears into your eyes? He replied I recalled the divine words of Allah wa in and there is no one among us you who shall not cross over hell and I am not aware whether I will be saved or not once Sayyidina Abu Musaira radiallahu ta'ala anhu went to a room to take some rest but suddenly he became anxious and said would that my mother had not given birth to me? His honorable wife Radhi asked, Why are you saying that? He replied, Indeed Allah has informed us about passing the hellfire, but we don't know whether or not we will be saved from it. Sayyidina Fuzail bin Ayyad narrates that the journey of the bridge of Sirat is 15,000 years long. Meaning, 
the distance that a fast running horse can cover in 15,000 years. 5,000 years will be going up, 5,000 years going down, and 5,000 years, 5, years going straight. The bridge of Sirat is thinner than a strand of a year, sharper than the edge of a sword, and has been placed over the back of hell. The person who is weak and anxious due to the fear of Allah will succeed in crossing the bridge of Sirat. Our mother of Muslims, Sayyidatina Aisha Sadiqa, narrated. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, There is a bridge over the hell, which is thinner than a strand of fear and sharper than the edge of the sword. Upon it, there are hooks and thorns made of iron, which catch hold of those people whom Allah Azza wa wills. And people will cross the bridge of Sirat in different ways. Some will cross it very swiftly like the blink of an eye, some like lightning, some like the wind, some like fast horse and camel riders. The angels will be reciting Rabbi Sallim, Rabbi Sallim, Yani, Oh my Rabb, let him pass safely. Oh my Rabb, let him pass safely. Some Muslims will be saved. Some will be injured. And some will fall into the fire of hell on their faces. Tubu ila Allah. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that the beloved of Allah Azza wa Jalla sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam came holding the hands of Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala anhu and asked O oh, Abu Zar, do you know we have a difficult valley ahead of us and only those having a light burden will successfully pass it. Another person asked, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, am I from those who have heavy burden or from those who have light burden? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Do you have sustenance for today? He said, yes. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then asked, Do you have sustenance for tomorrow? He again said, yes. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked again, Do you have sustenance for the day after tomorrow? He replied, no. The beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, If you had possessed sustenance for the three days, you would have been among us those people who have heavy burden. So my brothers, let's judge ourselves. Storing food for three days seems nothing to us. Our fridges and cupboards are full of different things just because of greed and what to say. We store varieties of food even unnecessarily. What will happen to the greedy people like us? We have a heavy burden of wealth, greed to increase our wealth, the burden of numerous shops and businesses and burden of tax, interest, loans, deception, betrayal, countless burdens. We have a very heavy burden upon our shoulders, how will we cross the bridge of Sirat? The Muslims to whom Allah will show mercy will be given such noor, whereby they will succeed on the day of judgment. As Allah Azza wa says in His glorious Quran, Para 27, Surah Hadith, بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم ترى المؤمنين والمؤمنات يسعى نورهم بين أيديهم بين أيديهم وبأيمانهم 
the day when you will see the believing men and believing women that their light turns before them and on their right. The fortunate Muslims who, whom Allah Azza wa will show mercy will be crossing the bridge of Sirat joyfully, swaying and their bright and sparkling faces due to the light of their faith. Therefore, the merciful Prophet Wasallam has said, Hellfire will say to the Mu'min, Hellfire will say to the Mu'min, a true believer, O Mu'min, pass quickly because your light has extinguished my fire. So to prepare ourselves to pass through, to pass over the bridge of Sirat, let's see, let's listen. A hadith, how can we prepare ourselves? So let's have five tools in our hand. Tool number one. It is Muslim Imam Ahmad, hadith number 65, 687, 6587. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has said the salah will be nur burhan and salvation on the day of judgment for the one who protects it while there will neither be any nur and burhan nor any salvation for the one who doesn't protect salah and such a person will be will be taken out from their graves with Karun, Firaun, Haman, and Ubay bin Khalaf, the leader of the hypocrites on the Day of Judgment. So first tool is to protect our Salah. So if we offer our Salah five times with happy heart, inshallah, we will get that new. Second, Sunan Abi Dawood, Hadith number 571, Sallallahu Ta'ala Ali Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Give the good news of nur e yani complete Nur, on the Day of Judgment for those people who go to the Masjid in darkness. So, tool number two, we have to offer, darkness means, Fajr, and it's the darkness you go out of your homes and go out of your bed, warm beds, and go for Salah by Jamaat. So, we, in, we shall make, inshallah, in our intention to pray Fajr at least for, with Jamaat. Third two. In Tabrani, Hadith number 4504. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Azza wa Jal will make two types of nur on the bridge of Sarah on the day of judgment for the one who removes a Muslim's brother difficulty. Their light will illuminate the universe and Allah Azza wa Jal knows the exact number. So third tool is to help our brothers, Muslim brothers, to remove their difficulties. Fourth tool. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Whosoever recite La Ilaha Illallah hundred times, Allah Azza wa Jal will will take him out of his grave in such a state that his face will be shining as the moon shines on the 14th night. Chodmi Kacha. So, reciting La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah 100 times is very easy. So we can do in 5 minutes. And the fifth two, whosoever does the zakat, the zikr of Allah Azza wa in the market. He will be given nur on the day of judgment for his every single year.
wherever you pass the market there will be environment of full of negligence so lower your gaze and begin doing zikr and reciting the rule and always remember to read the fourth kalma yani la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulku wa lahu alhamd yuhyi wa yumit wa huwa hayyul la yamut bi yadihi alkhayr wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir inshallah azawaj you will receive the rewards of 10 100000 good deeds 100 thousand 100 thousand uh, 10 hundred thousand sins will be ordered and your rank will be increased by 10 hundred thousand it is stated in tirmizi hadith number 3439 inshallah whatever we have heard we will inshallah continue to practice and inshallah we will prepare ourselves to pass through the pull sirat successfully inshallah by the grace of allah nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu 'alayhi wa sallimu taslima صلى الله على النبي الامي واله صلى الله عليه وسلم الصلاه والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد صدق الله العظيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والآقبة للمتقين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم ارفع عنا البلاء والوباء إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيم الصلاة Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Shalla ilaha illallah 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 الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين ياك نعبد وياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والتين والزيتون وطور السنين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا لين 
الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي يدع اليتيم ولا يحض على طعام المسكين فويل للمصلين الذين هم عن صلاتهم ساهون الذين هم يراون ويمنعون الماعون الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المسلمين جزا الله عنا سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وآله اللهم أعيني على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم رب 